Wow, it didn't suck. Every once in a while, Hollywood has the wherewithal to actually listen to the pleas of audiences. Not all, of course, otherwise the Halo series on Paramount Plus would have received a better welcome than a cactus for a gynecologist the series has turned out to be thus far. But this doesn't mean that there aren't fleeting moments of sensibility every so often. 2019 Sonic proved this when the internet collectively shamed the team behind the film into making a better design. Now thanks to the success of that film, we now have Sonic 2, continuing shortly after the prior film with Robotnik using the single quill he plucked from Sonic, hoping to return to Earth. And that he does, and a portal opens up, and of all things, Knuckles walks through, and they pair up to take down Sonic in Knuckles' own search for the Master Emerald. Sonic isn't alone, though, as Tails has also arrived to help out. Now the two teams race to discover the great power before the other can. The returning cast is a bit of a mixed bag here. Jim Carrey getting to act like he once did in these two Sonic films is more than he's done for almost the last decade. That's more than I can say about James Marsden or Tika Sumter, who receive the Godzilla treatment. I know, there is more time with Sonic and pals on screen than most of the humans. Which might be for the better, since some of these scenes have little reason to exist and you start to get that Godzilla 2014 restless leg syndrome, like please go back to the characters we came to see already. Now this isn't to say that all the characters are treated very well. As I mentioned before, most of the humans are ignored like actual breaking news, which in some ways might be better than Knuckles. While Tails isn't a moron, but also doesn't shine either, Knuckles receives the Goku treatment here from Dragon Ball Z abridged. Sure, he's not the same from the games, as I have been told, but he does have some of the best jokes in the film. Now on the other side of this coin, the CGI is noticeably inferior. What the team behind the first Sonic did was astonishing. As mentioned before, they actually listened to the fans when people complained about how Sonic looked like something Shao Tucker whipped up. And I'm confident the changes led to its box office success and outperformance of the anal fissure that was Birds of Prey. However, CGI isn't enough to sell a movie, and in Sonic in Sonic 2's case, the notoriety has worn off, but my skepticism hasn't, and there are some really janky moments. Almost every scene in which Sonic interacts with a human feels awkward, almost like they didn't have a prop to hug or anything that remotely resembled one of the characters, like the mocap actor for the dog in Call of the Wild. Many CGI character interactions don't quite work here, with bad tracking of objects not quite lining up, just like many of the logistical errors. There are some moments when debris falls off of something, and the people we care nothing about now were last seen where that stuff landed. And I doubt the people in this universe are related to Jason Voorhees, so teleporting isn't an option. Yeah, good job, Sonic. After you're done defeating Robotnik, you can send Tails to get a mop. Lots of things appear or don't line up at all, whether that be little things like Tails flying super fast into town in the day, then the next cut it's night, which isn't much of an issue to be fair. But larger issues like Tails knowing almost literally everything about the plot are never explained. Tails just knows who Sonic is. How? I don't even need to dive into the rest of the walking exposition that Tails is. Or his magical translator device for Russian. How do you even know what Russian is? How far do Twitter's tendrils go? Anyway, Tails just happens to know almost everything about the plot and can dump exposition when it needs him to. Sonic 2 is one of those rare moments in which the sequel surpasses the first movie. Weaker CGI and a moderate script are supported by emphasis on Sonic and company with jokes that had both the audience and I chuckling throughout. It's not great, but it's a far more enjoyable time with more life than the so-called living vampire that was Morbius. In fact, click on the link over here to hear my thoughts on what a waste of time Morbius was, and don't forget to like, share, ring the bell, and subscribe for more movie reviews. And I'll see you in the next one.